I am PH Ong. I'm here with Kong Yu Yang, the 2016-17 International Speech Champion of District 89. In August, Kong will be moving up to the runoffs of the World Championships of Public Speaking, which will be held in Vancouver, Canada. So Kong, congratulations on your win at the District 89 contest. Now you have completed two TI journeys to the mm -hmm. World Championships, mm -hmm. right? So share with us the most memorable uh, events or experiences for each of the two journeys. In each of the journeys, they were both really different journeys. In 2011, I think being able to make it to the finals was already amazing and I really felt like I was over the moon. And then to, to be able to come second was way beyond my imagination. So I didn't know and I didn't expect to even make the top three. I would have liked to, but the fact that I was just in the finals, that was enough for me. Then the second time in 2014, that was really memorable because the th fact that my parents were in the audience. So they actually saw me live speaking in the semi-finals and the finals. And even though I didn't come first, even though I still came second, it was just really nice to have my parents there. Right, okay. Now, yeah. how were the two journeys very similar or different? Whew, they're, they're very different in that in 2011, that was also my second time to compete. So I already had some experience. And this time when I was competing, my main goal was just to make it to the finals and to have some fun. And I had two speeches which I thought were quite strong. Well, actually, I only had one speech which was really strong, and then I developed Fortune Cookie. For 2014, it was definitely a little bit more serious. I really wanted to do well. I wanted to make it to the finals because I knew I could make it to the finals, and I knew I could make the top three again. So I concentrated a little bit more, or was a little bit more focused on winning that time. So what was this? What was it like to have come second in the world? <laughs> on both occasions, the <laughs> on both occasions, the first time, as I mentioned earlier, I was over the moon. It was beyond my expectations, and I was really, really excited. So I had this huge smile, and I felt like I came first. The second time, I really wanted to come first, and midway through the contest, I thought that I had a great chance. But then Dun and Jaya came out and he had this amazing speech and it was very obvious that his speech was another level above mine. And so I was a little bit disappointed that I came second, but at the same time his speech was way better than mine and it was just good to, it was amazing to watch that. So compared to the other two journeys, this upcoming trip that you have, what do you think is going to excite you the most? I think it's just going to be exciting to be a part of the contest again. So I haven't been at the world stage for I think two years now and I think it's just going to be exciting to be there, see some old friends, be part of the atmosphere and feel that energy and just being able to stand up on either semi-finals or the final stage to speak is just going to be an amazing feeling. So what's the difference about speaking on the District 89 final stage versus the World Champion final stage? Mm. They're very different audiences. So the world stage, it's really an international audience. It's still more towards a Western audience, but it is becoming more and more international. So you'll notice that a lot of the champions in the last few years have a more cultural background, but they're able to tap into it and show it for, for the rest of the world. District 89, it's more, it, it's a different audience altogether. And the jokes that they laugh at, or the jokes that we laugh at, I should say, and the structure and the stories are all going to be a little bit different. Right, right. So in August, you're going back you know, to the US stage. So what do you look forward to? I think going back to the US stage, I look forward to being a part of the whole contest and that buzz that comes out of the contest. So it's about enjoying the journey, right? Yeah.
Now tell us more about your new speech. What inspired you? Mm. The new speech, it, it's been interesting because I kept, there's a story that I found which I knew was very interesting and could get some humour and it links up with a message that I've been thinking about from maybe two or three years ago. So to be able to find the story and connect it back to this message I've been thinking about, I think that's really exciting and to be able to put them together finally it's it's great it's a great chance for me the the speech i did in district 89 finals that just passed a couple of months ago i think that was definitely more tailored for the district 89 audience and i wasn't sure whether it would translate well into an international audience now with this other speech for the international audience now that i'm, I'm working on it it's just more interesting it's more of a storytelling and it is, yeah, it's definitely more of a storytelling type of speech. How long did you prepare for that? When people ask me that question, I find it really hard to measure because I don't have a stopwatch next to me or a right. clock where I go, all right, I'm going to start writing and then time. So it's really hard to gauge. I would say that the time I've spent has been a lot. I'm always, I'm constantly writing or thinking about it, but compared to the first time or the second time, it's a little less. Mainly because my ability to write a story or write a script, it's better than before. Right. So I can write a little faster. But I still get stuck and I still get confused and I still have to find ways to overcome my writer's block. So there were still a lot of moments and difficult times where you, when you were working on the speech? Yes, definitely. Even now it's not a perfect speech. Even now I know that there are things I want to change, but I'm not sure how I'm going to change it yet. Okay. So how did you handle all, this, all these blockages and so on? Sometimes it's just taking a break, moving away from this, the script. Sometimes it's just watching other things like TV shows, YouTube, just to relax and maybe get a different perspective. And every now and then, because your mind is thinking about your message or your story, you'll pick things out from around you anyway. You'll start noticing things from around you. So without making any specific details, what is it about this new speech that you think the audience can look forward to? With all my speeches, I like it to be entertaining and interesting. Yes. So there is some laughing points, there is a bit of suspense in the story and I think the audience can be looking forward to more of a storytelling style. Okay, you were first runner at the World Championship twice. Mm -hmm. What do you think it takes to be world number one? <laughs> if I knew the answer, <laughs> I would probably be world number one by now. So I don't know the answer. I think it's having a great story, being able to tell it, and a little bit of luck. And to be number one is getting harder every single year. Mm -hmm. There are more competitors, more semi-finalists. There's more, more access to videos, so everybody knows what it takes to become a better speaker. And everybody's trying to be number one. So I don't think there's a formula, because there are a lot of people trying to compete for it. So I don't, I don't think too much about that. It's more about, okay, if I get to the finals and I get number one, awesome. If I don't, then that's fine. Today we spoke a lot about championships, but there are a lot of people out there who still fear public speaking. So mm. what would you say to all these people? If you're nervous, it's because you're in a, an environment where you feel uncomfortable. And it's just a matter of practicing a little bit more and making sure you have some guidance to feel more comfortable and to manage that more. It's like when you ride a bike or you go swimming, you're not able to do it at first and the first time somebody throws you in the water, you're gonna panic a little. But with some practice and some coaching, then it becomes easier over time. Okay. So can you perhaps demonstrate how someone could relax before going on the stage to give a speech? Huh. But how to be more relaxed before going on stage? For me, it's about asking somebody to 
have fun, make some fun to take my mind off the actual contest. So you could be telling me a joke or just making fun of me and I'm making fun of them or we talk about something totally different just to take my mind off the contest. So what is it that keeps bringing you back to the contest circuits? I would say every year is different. Every year there's something different driving me to into the contest and I feel that when you have a different drive every year it makes it more interesting as well. If you have to give a piece of advice for somebody who's considering whether to join the contest circuit, mm. what would that be? Be prepared that it's not easy. It's very tiring. There's a lot of hours spent writing and rehearsing and going through a bit of stress so it isn't an easy task but at the end of the day it's really rewarding. So what is the passion behind what you do? I'm actually not sure I think sometimes it's that energy that you get when you're up on stage sometimes it's knowing that you've inspired the audience in a little way and they've taken something away from that. Okay. Yeah. So the probably. takeaway is important? The takeaway is important, okay. yeah. So what inspired you to join Toastmasters? What inspired me to join Toastmasters? It was probably many years back. Many, many years ago. So when I first started out working as a corporate graduate, so I graduated, I entered a company called Qantas, which is Australia's national airline. And when I joined them, they would have what are called road shows, or in some places they call them town halls, where we would have the high level management executives. So the CEO and then the people who report to the CEO would come and talk to us. And I remember two speakers who spoke to us, and at the time the airline industry was actually on a low. There's SARS, there was 9 11, nobody wanted to travel. So it was really a bad time to be in the airline industry. But they were able to communicate with us and make us feel really inspired and feel like, wow, our company is in a really good position to do well and to get through the troubles. And I thought, wow, that's really powerful to be able to convince us to be so positive. And I realized it was through communications. Right. To start off, I wasn't that involved. When I joined it again in China, it was really to find a group of friends and people who spoke English. And then I entered the contest. I did well in the humorous speech contest, but I wasn't really interested in being a president or area governor or anything like that. I just wanted to focus on the speaking. But over time, after a while, I had an experience where I was area governor, and then I became founding president of a club. When I realized, yeah, there's a lot more to Toastmasters and you get a lot more out of it when you're a leader or you're practicing your leadership skills and you're seeing different people grow and all of a sudden there was this new connection and something that I thought was really important for, for me to help me grow as well, especially because I wasn't getting that in my career at the time. Toastmasters was a great way for me to practice all of these skills. Then over time, because I spent time in Toastmasters, Toastmasters just became a part of my life. And now, because Toastmasters has made me who I am today, I feel like if I had to stop Toastmasters, I'd be almost giving up part of myself. Okay. Yeah. So you're really both a speaker as well as a leader. Now, some of our viewers may not have heard of Toastmasters. So would you like to highlight the importance of Toastmasters? The importance of Toastmasters, wow, where do I start? Toastmasters is really important and whether it's communications or leadership, it's just a great place for you to practice and to grow. And it's a safe space, which is really important. The other thing is, apart from being a safe space, it is progressive. So if you keep at Toastmasters over time, then you'll definitely get better. If you just go once or twice, you get a little bit better and then you lose the skills and you drop back away. So when you mention safe space, what, what does that mean? Yes, it's a safe space because when you're there, nobody's judging you. Everybody's there 
and that everybody's been through that progress. They started out as a new member or a guest and they've slowly developed. So they know where you've been and they're there to support you. As opposed to in the workforce where you're at work, people are judging you, your managers want you to do well, there's something else behind that, all of that. Today, what is the most important message that you would mm. like to get across to all our viewers? Mm. The most important message I think would be to enjoy the journey. Whether you're joining the contest, whether you're joining as a member, or whether you're trying to be an officer, enjoy the process. Everything takes time, you're going to go through ups and downs, and at the end of the whole process, you're going to look back and you're going to go, wow, you know, and feel really rewarded. So for the upcoming trip or your speech or for yourself, what the, if you were to do a shout out, hmm. what would that be? Shout out, what would a that shout be? A shout out. I would just say enjoy it. Just enjoy it. Okay. For this trip or your speech or for yourself, if you were to do a shout out, hmm. what would that be? I would just say enjoy it. Just enjoy it. Okay, thank you. Thank you. So this is Kish Ong. I was in Kong Yu Yang, the 2016-17 the National Speech Champion of District 89, who gave us a lot of insights about his uh, championship journeys, and then he's on his way to Vancouver in August uh, to compete in the World Championship of Public Speaking. So all the best to Kong. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.